welcome everybody to this webinar hosted by Preply, the one-on-one -on -one tutoring platform to get you talking. I'm Tom and I'm here to present the last webinar of our English Evolution series. This series has been all about how English can change your life personally and professionally. So far, we've looked at learning English for business, how to pass English exam. Today, we're going to speak all about how to learn English independently and how you can create a self-study plan for success. So you'll see here that you have the chat. Give us a wave, give us a thumbs up and tell us what country you're watching us from in the world. My colleague Adam is also here to answer your questions. And uh, yeah, let us uh, let us know too. Are you in a country where people speak English? Because if not, you may be thinking, how can I improve it? Well, if you're one of these people, we've got some great tips for you coming up. So you can also in the chat leave any questions for our very special guest, who is Lindsay McMahon from All Is English. So I can say for one, Lindsay, that many of our English students are preply listen to your podcast and uh, your podcast has touched the, the hearts, the minds and the ears of millions of English learners. So thank you so much for joining us. Well, thank you, Tom. I'm so excited to be here. This is going to be a really fun webinar and we are going to engage with our listeners here. It's going to be great. Great stuff. And uh, for those who may not know you, can you explain a little bit about yourself? Of course, of course. So my name is Lindsay McMahon and I'm the co-host and also the founder of All Ears English. And I've been teaching English for 16 years. I've taught English all over the world in Japan, in South America, and that's Argentina, Guatemala, in Boston, and in New York City. And I've also learned languages. So I've learned Japanese, Spanish, and French. So I really understand what it's like to be in the trenches, to be mm -hmm. struggling and striving and having a vision for your ability in a new language, guys. So I'm happy to be here and thanks for having me, Tom. Mm -hmm. Thanks very much. And I see in the chat, so Elisa said, I really love your podcast. I mean, us as well. And I'm sure a lot of people here that also listen to all these English podcast. And I mean, there are some, you know, incredible numbers behind this podcast. So as we look through, you know, over 1,600 podcasts to date, that's a lot of, a lot of audio <laughs> content for English learners. Yes. Yeah. We publish four days a week. We love podcasting and we think it's powerful. We love to inspire our listeners. So a lot of content. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, it's, uh, you know, four to five million monthly listeners, 246 million downloads. And you've been going since 2013. And it was also listed best of Apple podcasts in 2018 and 2019 in various countries and categories. So congrats on the, the success with the podcasts. Thank you, thank you. Yes, that's four to five million monthly downloads. So those are mm -hmm. downloads, but we have a large audience and people are ready to go. They're inspired, love it. Mm -hmm. Exactly, and when we spoke to you before this webinar, you said in your you know years and years of speaking with and working with English learners, you've seen some common challenges that yes. English learners have. So at Preply, we see as well, very similar challenges. So let's talk through them a little bit. So yes. for some of our audience, you may be watching this webinar for some of these reasons. And if this does sound like you, let us know in the chat, or maybe there are other reasons. But uh, so one of them is not having the time to study. <laughs> Mm -hmm. Yeah, Tom, I think this is a really big one here, especially for adult learners, right? We're not kids, right? We're not in school. We have kids, right? We have careers, we have spouses. We don't have a lot of time, but that doesn't have to kill our dreams of becoming fluent in a language, right? Mm -hmm. Absolutely. And uh, as well, like wanting to improve, but not having the motivation to do it alone is a big one. Yeah, that's huge. That's huge because if we are not motivated, we will not learn. So we mm -hmm. need to just make sure we're doing the right things that are bringing us in and keeping us motivated. Mm -hmm. Exactly. And having too much time. So therefore not enough structure to your studies and the way that you you studies is also a big frustration. And as well, you know, there's lots of people that are frustrated at studying English in certain ways, but not feeling confident when they're speaking in the real world. 
Yeah, it's so true. It's so true, right? We learn in a textbook and then we try to take it out into the real world. It doesn't work. So we have to change the content that we're using to learn. And we're going to talk about that a little bit more today. Mm -hmm, exactly. And uh, yeah, as well, you've got picking the right resources. So mm -hmm. I, I did a search actually before this, uh, the <laughs> webinar and saw that there are almost 6 billion results. If you type learn English online into Google, and that's a lot to look through. Yeah, that and that's getting bigger and bigger every day, right? New content mm -hmm. is coming online every day. And that's a problem because how do we know, know who to trust? We need to kind of develop our own study plans and have that one thing to focus on because there's just too much going on. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. And uh, just looking through the chat again, sorry, Lisa, yeah. that I usually listen to your podcast when I go for a run. Awesome. And we're going to talk, we're going to talk about a little bit about this uh, yep. in a minute. Yeah, I love that. I love that. Great stuff. And the, the last one, I think it's a very uh, common problem, especially in, in these days about feeling isolated. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Oh, for sure. For sure. And I know when I was learning Spanish and Japanese at times, I felt this too. And so I had to get out there into the community and find people. And we're going to talk about that too. We're giving little hints here, Tom, about what we're going to get into later in the webinar. So guys, mm -hmm. hang out, stay on the webinar. But yeah, we're going to show you how to not be quite so isolated when you're learning. Language mm -hmm. is a human thing. We should be connected. Mm -hmm. Exactly. And uh, so you know, during this webinar, we're going to help you overcome some of these challenges, like Lindsay said, and we're also going to uh, send you right now, if I just open up the, the handouts here, an activity that you can do either right now as you're going through the webinar, or you can do it after the webinar, let's say as homework. And what this is, is it allows you to do a little bit of self-reflection to think about how you're going to study English by yourself and effective ways to do it. So make sure you download that and uh, either take a look at it as, as we're going through the webinar or you can take a look at it afterwards. But for okay. now, let's move forward. So with your top tips that you've pulled together, Lindsay, to learn English by yourself. So are we yes. ready to go? We are ready. And guys, these tips are based on what we've seen other students do. We've ha we've been doing this podcast for seven years. So we have seen successful students and less successful students. We're going to show you what the successful students have done. All right. Mm -hmm. Exactly. All right. So tip number one is understand and find your why. So see yes. the bigger reason for learning. So can you tell us a little bit more about this? Yeah, I mean, this is what it's all about. There has to be a bigger reason than just that you want to learn English or you want to learn a language, guys. For us at All Ears English, the reason we have published 1,600 episodes is that it goes so much deeper than the language. It's about human connection. And that's partly based on my own experiences, honestly, feeling disconnected learning Spanish. I remember sitting on a beach in Colombia and, and hearing my name and not understanding what people were saying. I've never felt more disconnected. And so we created All Ears English and our vision to actually help people connect through the language. We never want to lose human connection because we make a grammar mistake, because we don't have the right word. Those things don't matter as much. We need to maintain eye contact with that person and laugh at their joke and feel that warmth of the human connection. So mm -hmm. that's our why connection, not perfection. Absolutely. So we recommend keeping that in mind, right, Tom? Yeah, mm -hmm. absolutely. And this is a, a, an amazing, amazing uh, line, I think, to to really think about how you can be confident in a language is is really don't think about every word that you're saying. And I think that's an amazing why. And I'm sharing as well um, a couple of examples maybe about how you can create your why. So we've got one example here. Uh, I'm going to ask my girlfriend's parents for their blessing to propose to their daughter in six months. So what do we think about this, uh, this reason to learn English, Lindsay? 
That is fantastic. I love it. And you know, in my mind, connection is the overarching why, and then each person is going to have their own very specific why. So we, we want you guys to think about your specific why right now. This is moving to me, right? Mm -hmm. And now if I'm learning English, I'm going to ask someone's parents that I can marry their, their, uh, their daughter or son or daughter. I mean, wow, that is mm -hmm. such a why, such a strong reason to be learning. Mm -hmm, exactly. And well, maybe one thing to avoid is just to think, uh, I think it would be cool to learn English one day because uh, yeah. I just want to. I don't think that's very emotional, no. tangible. There's no time on it that yeah. makes that really pushes you. Exactly. And Tom, I also think that if 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 our listeners are thinking that they are the second one, I think it would be cool. It just means we haven't taken the time to think about it. So mm -hmm. take some time and really go deep, be reflective. Why am I really learning? What is this mm -hmm. all about for me? Right? Absolutely. And uh, yeah, that's why it's the first question on our handout as well. And just to think about what's your reason, your real reason to learn English and, you know, drop it in the chat as well. And maybe uh, we're fascinated to hear your story as well and read why you're learning English and perhaps you can inspire some other people as well. Okay. Yeah, I really want to so see. Mm -hmm. Let's let's uh, move on while they come in in the chat, and uh, we can we can take a look through as well. Uh, let's move on to number two, and it's to be physically active while you learn. So, could you tell us a little mm -hmm. bit about this? Yeah, I mean, we know this intuitively that when we get up from our desk, for me, my best ideas never come when I'm in my office here at my desk. They come when I go to the gym and mm -hmm. I'm on the rower, right? And or other examples, I just go out for a lunch break and I take a walk to the park. That's when the gears start to turn and the ideas become so much easier. So the, the brain starts to move and it's easier to learn and solidify what you've heard if you're practicing listening when you are physically active. And Tom, it sounds like you've been doing some physical activity as well and reaping the benefits of that. Yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, this is quite an embarrassing picture, but this is me <laughs> on the right hand side uh, doing Brazilian Jiu Jitsu and actually I do Brazilian Jiu Jitsu in Spanish because I I'm lucky to live in Barcelona, um, but that doesn't that doesn't always mean if you live in a country that you're going right. to learn the language because I could just speak English the whole time that I'm at Jiu Jitsu, but I choose to speak Spanish because I want to learn it. So yes. I think it's important to to do these things and activities, especially if it's sport or movement uh, that can help you learn um, a language as well. And exactly. um, I've just read as well uh, in the chat that Maxime says um, that the reason why is that they want to improve their accent. Mm -hmm. um, we'll maybe get to, um, we'll maybe move on to that a bit uh, later on because I think, uh, yeah, Im improving your accent, not always essential, right, Lindsay? No, it's not always essential. I mean, let's go one level deeper. What is the why behind that, right? What are the connections that maybe you're missing by not having that accent you want? I really like the one we have in the chat. Someone wants to get a raise. Mm -hmm. Imagine about your, think about your income, how much you're making now and how much a raise could change your life and your family's life. That is a good why, right? Mm -hmm. Maybe your kids will now be able to go to camp or go to some kind of special school because you're making more money that is a why that we mm -hmm. want to talk about here and connect every moment we're studying English to a why like that. Mm -hmm. Exactly. And yeah, so just to back up what we were talking about, about the exercise as well is this study. Um, so could you elaborate yeah. a, li a little bit on sure. this? Thing? Yeah, this was a study done published in frontiers in public health, and it was a broad study and they looked at students. They looked at what happened when they, they did 10 minutes of walking and they found that it did improve cognitive function, um, memory and, and their ability to carry out other cognitive tasks. And we know this, I think everyone has experienced sitting down, being static, and then going and getting up and all of a sudden the ideas come to us. We know this intuitively. So mm -hmm. let's take this information and use it. Let's be smart about how we're studying. Mm -hmm. Exactly. And these could be, uh, you know, movement as well. It doesn't have to be jujitsu or exactly. anything like that. It can be yeah. Podcasts while you're taking a walk, it can be audiobooks, YouTube, exactly. right? Exactly. And YouTube, you can play on, you don't need to watch the video, right? So we want to watch where we're walking on the sidewalk. We don't want to trip and fall. So it's okay to just turn the audio on, on the video, right? That's what mm -hmm. we're talking about here, guys. It doesn't have to be complicated. 
Mm -hmm. Exactly. And uh, for anyone who uh, who uses Preply here as well, you keep in mind that you have the mobile app as well. So what might be interesting is with your tutor, arrange a time, say, OK, I'm going to take a walk while I take my lesson and just yeah. see where the lesson goes. It could be a very interesting experience to walk outside to say, OK, I'm crossing the street now or I'm going, you know, there is a McDonald's across the street. Yeah. And just to engage with your tutor while you're walking could be an interesting experience. Yeah. And so much more material to work on with the tutor, right? Ideas mm -hmm. will come up, things you didn't know you had to communicate when you were at home at your desk, you now do. So you're mm -hmm. stretching yourself in a new way. Mm -hmm. Exactly. And uh, I'm just looking through the chat again. There's some incredible reasons why here. Um, yes. I want to communicate with my husband's family and people. Also, oh. I want to get a job here in the U.S. These are yeah, really inspiring, actually. Love it. Love it. This is what it's about. So we have to keep this in mind as we're learning. Mm -hmm. Exactly. And, you know, I would like to talk in English confidently for a better career. Um, yeah. yeah, really, really motivational stuff, guys. So keep them coming. So uh, until then, our third tip is uh, mm -hmm. don't learn English, but learn other things through English. So what kind of things can we do? What does that mean, Lindsay? Totally. This is just a mindset shift. I personally don't necessarily think that learning English is all that interesting. I think learning something else using English is more interesting because mm -hmm. then I become multi-skilled, multi-talented, and I become fluent in another language, right? So mm -hmm. let's think about how we could do that. I mean, I've taken a cooking class in Peru in Spanish, right? This, the food in Lima is amazing, by the way, Tom. I don't know if you've tried it. No, uh, it's not been so lucky enough. <laughs> good. It is so good. So right. I want to learn how to cook food from Lima. Not mm -hmm. so much to learn Spanish, but I did it in Spanish. So I gained that skill and the, the other skill of cooking. So mm. that's what we mean by this. Right. Got you. And it, it could be, uh, it could be anything in particular. It could be guitar lessons, right? It could be a, taking a course in history. Uh, it could be video yes. games. If you love video games, I think it's an amazing way to learn, learn mm -hmm. the language. Mm -hmm. Are you, and your Taekwondo or your Jiu Jitsu class, right? Mm -hmm. You're also doing it in Spanish. So you're gaining a more interesting skill right. than just the Spanish language, right? Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. And, uh, I, I added this slide from this quote and it's from your podcast actually yes. and i think it's really really interesting because it gives us a little bit of context about what we're explaining here so do you mind um, sure. expanding on this absolutely so my colleague jessica interviewed gabe weiner in episode 1554 of the allers english podcast and Gabe is from Fluent Forever. It's an app and a book, I believe. Anyways, he has some great insight on how you need to grab vocabulary from a real experience, mm -hmm. like the cooking class, like the jujitsu, like the guitar class. Grab that vocabulary because you experience those words in that moment and then put those on your flashcard. Don't go mm -hmm. to the internet for your flashcard or to a book. That's the mm -hmm. difference. Mm -hmm, exactly. Because then you have a, a real emotional attachment, exactly. right? Exactly. With, with the language and the words that you're, you're, you're learning. Yes. Um, so again, another question for you guys is what do you want to learn through, uh, through English or what can you learn through English? Or maybe you can uh, tell us in the chat as well, what are you currently learning in English? So yeah, this is interesting. It could be video games again or it could be guitar it could be a completely different skill but again very curious to to hear uh what you're learning through english or what you could learn through english this one's this one's interesting tom enrique said he learns about bicycle mechanics and he searches for it in wow. english how cool wow yeah that's that's amazing i mean th this is an example as well of youtube right mm -hmm. using youtube to um perhaps know if you're if you need to fix something or you need to do something and yeah. searching for those instructions in english could be a good way love it love it and someone said six sigma i think that's a business framework so so good to learn that directly in the language of the business world right mm -hmm. which is english mm -hmm. and yeah as well i mean you got i watch tv actually uh, the kids show arthur you know, Arthur, thumbs up for Arthur. That's a classic show. Love it. <laughs> yeah. 
<laughs> All right. So as those are coming in as well, uh, those other um, those other things that people are learning as well as English, we're going to talk about finding your friends. So what do we mean by finding your friends? Okay, so this is a way of finding kind of virtual friends. So you have your own friends. You must have your own friends. Have your own life in real life, please. Make sure you are building your own community first. Secondarily, you can have virtual friends. For example, Michelle and I on All Ears English, we like to hang out every Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, and we chat. So if you come listen to our podcast, you'll feel like you're in a cafe with us. And that's just one example. So mm -hmm. find some friends, virtual friends, whether they're English teachers who have a YouTube channel or a podcast or an Instagram that you admire, that you want to speak like them. For mm -hmm. example, Luke from Luke's English podcast, he's a funny guy, mm -hmm. right? If you want to learn how to be funny in English, listen to his podcast, mm -hmm. look at the personalities of the people and get to know these people, their quirks. What's their life like? What are their hobbies? We don't have to learn with a faceless textbook. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. And it's like you said, it's about connection. And I, I put on the screen here, just some people, you know, it doesn't have to be, uh, you know, language, uh, people who are speaking directly about language. It, yeah. Like Lindsay said, it could be comedians. It could be um, other kind of YouTube influencers. It could be podcasters. Uh, there's so many, so many different people that you can take as inspiration for the mm -hmm. way you talk, right? Absolutely. I love it. Mm -hmm. It could be a movie star as well. For yeah, example. that's true. We can get creative <laughs> here. But we the point is we're getting to know the person on mm -hmm. the other end of, of the microphone, of the, the YouTube channel. Get to know that person. You come back. You want to hear about their weekend. You want to hear what's the latest thing going on in their life. And then you can relate. And then it becomes human. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. And uh, yeah, again, it's about focusing on learning through people and not textbooks, curriculums. Yeah. Uh, and this is a very effective, I think, way, way to learn a language. And as well, uh, you know, before we move on, is there anyone that you listen to that you treat as your online friends? I know we've got plenty of people in the chat that uh, listen to the All Is English podcast. Um, you might watch a, a particular YouTuber. You, uh, you know, might follow an Instagram account you know, feel free to drop these in the chat so that other people might get inspired and also follow the same people and improve their English as well. Yeah, let us know, guys. Exactly. So uh, the fifth tip that we have here is about finding the correct zone of challenge. Now, sounds a bit complex or complicated. <laughs> Uh, what do we mean by this? And I'm going to share a graphic now on the next slide yeah. that Lindsay, could you please explain a little bit about this graphic? Sure. Well, the famous scientist, I guess, Mihai Csikszentmihalyi talked about flow. We need to find flow. And this means we need to choose the right materials. It can't be too hard and it can't be too easy. So you need to find that balance and you will know when you found it. A lot of people find our podcast and they find it, they can understand about 65%. So if you're at 65% comprehension, you can stay with that channel, that medium. And then you move your way up. We've had students tell us they listened for three years and they got to 90% comprehension. It's incredible because they came, became addicted to the show. They love it. So they mm -hmm. come back, they understand, and then they feel better and better the more they understand. But if you understand less than 50% of a show or a channel, you should find a new one. Drop down just for you know a month, a couple of months, find something easier, work on your language, and then come back up to that original show and you'll be ready. But just understand your comprehension level. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. And I, I saw earlier up in the chat, um, someone, sorry, I forgot, I forgot your name. Yeah. It's uh, quite far up in the chat mention about reading Lord of the Rings and that that is actually their reason why they wanted to learn English because they were motivated. They probably loved this series. Yes. And, you know, it's worth keeping in mind with this is that Lord of the Rings right now might feel too challenging for you. So drop down to easier, easier things and you build your vocabulary and understanding of English. And eventually you're going to read Lord of the Rings all the way through and you're going to love it. Yeah. And Tom, just to connect our ideas here at that point, 
that becomes your why to be able to read Lord of the Rings, right? So you're dropping mm -hmm. down, you're prepping yourself, and now you have a strong motivation. I want to be able to read all of the Lord of the Rings, the whole thing. That's mm -hmm. huge. Mm -hmm. That's your why, right? Absolutely. Absolutely. And uh, yeah, I think, as you said, Lindsay, amazing examples from your podcast as well of, of people who you know, started at maybe 50% or lower and then yeah. built the, their way up. It's just about consistency as well. And this is what we're going to talk about next is about understanding mm -hmm. your habits and being consistent. So uh, what do you think about this one, Lindsay, about your habits? Yeah, Tom, this is, I'm glad that we're sort of, we have this at the end because nothing we've said so far matters if we don't make English learning a habit. So you choose the right channel, you find your friends, you find your why, but if we're not, you know, repeating the actual, whether it's listening or practicing, you know, on a regular basis, nothing's going to happen. We'll never achieve that vision, that why. So it's, mm -hmm. it matters so much what our habits are. And do we have a quote here from Tony Robbins? Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Yeah. And I can read it out. He says, okay. if we want to direct our lives, we must take control of our consistent actions. It's not what we do once in a while that shapes our lives, but what we do consistently. So what he's saying is every single day, if you've got a goal in your mind, you need to focus on it every day with discipline. You need to be disciplined to keep consistent. And it's, it's not that you can do it once a week and see big changes in your life. Right, Lindsay? Yeah, and I think that's why it's really important to choose uh, media or lessons or language lessons even that are short, right? Shorter, you know, 15, 30 minutes of content or practice mm -hmm. that we're doing on a daily basis is so much better than three hours once a week. Okay, mm -hmm. make it consumable, something you can consume and something you can accomplish in that time that you have. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. And it's, uh, I mean, you can think about it like your diet as well, right? Um, mm -hmm, exactly. The way you yeah. Eat. yeah. Yeah. I think I'm a very healthy eater and I almost everything I eat is like a superfood, right? I try to eat really well. I read about nutrition. So I eat very well during the week, but then I love chocolate ice cream on the weekends. I'll have an ice cream sometimes that is totally okay. It's what I do every day of the week. It's not about the Saturday or the Sunday. So just mm -hmm. set up a schedule like that with your learning. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. And I've just seen uh, Mary Rose say that language is habit formation. And mm -hmm. yeah. right. it's, it's, so it's all about your habits. Yes. Um, so we've got a challenge for you, everyone watching. And it's about, um, it's a question, actually. Um, so it's what bad habit could you change to do uh, to put in place a good habit? So think about maybe uh, you smoke cigarettes, for example, could you use that time that you usually go outside to listen to a podcast, right? What are some other examples, Lindsay? Yeah, I, th I love the cigarette example because actually I think, I mean, I'm not a smoker, but I think a lot of people find that smoking, like they feel connected to other smokers when they go outside, but you can feel connection if you're practicing a language. You can feel with your whoever you're practicing with or with your friends that you're listening to a podcast. So that's, a, you can replace an unhealthy habit with a healthy habit. Um, mm -hmm. Other examples, geez, maybe watching too much cable TV. I could replace that with putting my headphones on and going for a walk in the park, mm -hmm. right? With a podcast or a YouTube channel. Sure. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. And uh, Netflix, I mean, you know, I'm, I'm sure I'm not the only one here that, you know, can binge watch uh, 10 episodes of uh, Netflix over a weekend mm -hmm. easily. So <laughs> what, what could I do instead that could have made a difference to improve my Spanish and for you guys to, you know, improve your English. Uh, could yeah. you change that? It's yeah, worth I, thinking about. Yeah. I, I would love to see some examples here from our, our audience, from our mm -hmm. listeners, guys, type in the chat box, tell us what you're going to replace. What mm -hmm. is the bad habit that you're going to replace with consumption of English? Mm -hmm. okay. Exactly. Yeah. Really curious to see that. So drop those in the chat guys, and let's see you change your bad habits to good habits. <laughs> so, uh, while those come in, let's move on to uh, our final tip here. So it's find a way to speak. So the thing is, you can study with lots of useful, amazing material and engaging material in English, but uh, connecting with people, as you've said, Lindsay, is really important. And it's so important to get everything you've learned out of your mouth eventually, right? 
Yeah, I totally agree, Tom. I mean, a lot of what we've talked about is independent learning today, and we can do that, but we're preparing for that moment when we're going to be speaking. That's the key, right? We're listening, 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 and then we have to find a way to speak. How can mm -hmm. we do that, Tom? Mm -hmm. Exactly. So, you know, many people can ask, how can I start a conversation with a native? And they might say, I'm not surrounded by English speakers in my country. And you can do lots of things. I mean, people have been dropping in the chat um, about, you know, going to language exchanges and, yeah. uh, you know, there are language exchange websites. There are um, also tutors and teachers. So, you know, you might live if you live abroad, you could live in an international house or dorm with lots of people that can you can speak English with. There are lots of possibilities, but also if you're at home and by yourself, it doesn't mean you have to do it completely alone. So what I'm going to share actually as well uh, is uh, we're offering uh, at Preply, we're offering 50% off your first lesson. So if you're completely new to Preply, you cannot take 50% off your first lesson. And what this is, is one-to-one -one lessons with a tutor. So there, there, there are ways to get you speaking regularly and get yourself talking. So take a look for our tutors. I'm just about to, uh, yeah, if I manage to click it. So you see the button in the bottom left, it says level up and you can do that with Preply, um, with tutors with Preply. So take a look through there guys and, um, yeah, lots of tutors to, cho um, to choose from, and you can start practicing your speaking skills from today. So, so those were Lindsay's top seven tips. And so many people can listen to these ideas and the important thing, right, is to take action. So we've got some learners right here who took action to reach their goals, Lindsay. So what did these successful learners have in common? What did they do? Yeah, I am so inspired by these students, by these listeners of our show. Ramses, he's just full of energy. He knows what to do. So what he did was he immersed himself in, in culture, in pop culture, television, music, staying in touch with podcasts and the language. So he created a culture of thinking for himself by consuming media in English. Andrea she, as she says here, you, your dreams can come true if you work hard and study. That means she created a study plan or she had a study plan that she followed. So we have Ramses. He immersed himself in media. Mm -hmm. Andrea had a study plan and Joe, she thought about English as a way to connect with people, real people. So she spent a lot of time in our Facebook connecting with other students. So we have immersion in media study plan and it's all about people those are three ways to really become successful mm -hmm. absolutely really really uh you know if you do all of these things at once then awesome. you're onto a really <laughs> great path right really and good so these are really inspiring stories by uh, lots of people i mean you know ramses as well um and i believe andrea did really great on their IELTS test yeah, as well, they right, Lindsay? Mm -hmm. Yep, exactly. So Ramses and Andrea were our IELTS students. Joe was working on her English, I believe business English, actually. I'm not sure. But these guys knew how to do it and they did it the right way. Yeah, It's all about how you study. It's about mm -hmm. your study plan. Yeah. Absolutely. And so this is uh, the final slide that we have here, but obviously stick around for Q&A because We've got lots and lots of questions here that we can cover um, and really, really inspiring questions and important questions about English as well. But I just wanted to ask, uh, Lindsay, if you were to leave some some parting advice, some words of wisdom, what would you say uh, at the end of this? Yeah, what I would say, guys, is again, keep in mind connection, not perfection. And just in line with what we talked about today, English belongs to you. It doesn't belong to a native speaker. It doesn't belong to any teacher. It belongs to you. You can do it with the right resources, with the right classes, the right plans in your study plan, um, the right media. You can get to that level of fluency that you want to become fearless, to, to approach native speakers and to speak with them. It's up to you. It's in mm -hmm. your hands. I love that expression. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Brilliant expression. It's in your hands and you can, you can do it. Um, yep. you can change your life, uh, you know, within a matter of months, um, to, to really become really good, um, uh, you know, strong English learner. 
So exactly. I've been taking a look through some of the questions and there are some brilliant questions here. So let's get to them. Um, so uh, Renan, Renan, sorry if I, um, I've butchered your name here, Renan. Uh, how can I break the shame barrier to start talking to someone else? I think that's what can complicate things when learning a new language. Absolutely. Absolutely, Tom. Oh, man, we talk about this a lot on our show. We think about this a lot. You know, that's why we talk about connection, not perfection and your why. This is your why, where your why comes in. So, Raynon, what is your why? Tell us in the chat and then come back to that every time the shame comes over you, because the why is more important than the shame. Hmm. We need to put the shame in its place. We're human beings. We're going to feel embarrassed. I feel embarrassed sometimes but I have a deeper vision for what I'm trying to do with my life. You need to mm -hmm. keep that in mind all the time. So that's, mm -hmm. that's how we do that. Absolutely. It's yeah. Return to your reason why um, yeah. you're, you're learning English and, and also, you know, it's, uh, you, you're going to make mistakes and you just have to face that you're going to make mistakes and you're going to make some really funny mistakes actually. And <laughs> I've done the same, you know, in, in Spanish, uh, I make some terrible mistakes and people laugh and I remember it and I don't make those mistakes anymore. So you have to make the mistakes. Um, uh, yeah. And I think to... also, yeah, sorry, Tom, didn't mean to cut you off. Keep going. No, no worries. No, I was going to say, I think in line with what you just said, having a sense of humor towards yourself. Mm -hmm. If we're learning a language, that's the first thing we need is don't take ourselves too seriously. Because, mm -hmm. yeah, those mistakes are going to happen. The room is going to erupt in laughter based on something you said, and you have to laugh too. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Absolutely. Really uh, inspiring. So we've also got Ikumi here uh, who asked, when you set your goal, is it better to find a short-term goal or a long-term goal? What do you think about this, Lindsay? I think we need both, Tom, right? We mm -hmm. need both. We need, so coming back to the why, the long-term vision, maybe in two years, you want to apply for a job in the United States, right? That's your long-term goal. But then we break it down into a one-year goal, a six-month goal and weekly goals. So honestly, you need both. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Yeah. It, it's like we were saying with the, the reason why, if that's your, your big objective, what are the yeah. small actions that you can do every week, every month that can help you get there? I think that's exactly. worth keeping in mind as well. Exactly. Uh, and then those become habits, right? Those mm -hmm. become our habits. Yes. Absolutely. And what else do we have here? Uh, Elisa said, uh, today I have a job interview in English. My interviewers are an Indian person and another Russian person. I am worried about accents. So mm -hmm. thanks very much for your question, Elisa. It's really interesting. And yeah, uh, what do you think about this, Lindsay? Yeah, I mean, English is not just American English or British English, it's world English. And this is what we, I think that we, what we need to do is practice listening to that kind of English as well with the international accents. A hundred percent. It's the language of international business. That's not just happening in New York City and London. Mm -hmm. So you need exposure to those accents too. So consume the media so that when you're in that moment of the interview, you're used to that sound. That's mm -hmm. the key exposure. Absolutely. And you can do that on, um, on YouTube. And I've also, I'm going to send a link to the chat that might come in use for Elisa. It's uh, a tool called Youglish. And what this tool does is you can actually write uh, a sentence in English and it will have different accents. So Australian, American, British English, um, yeah. And you can practice your ear to listen to these different accents. So yeah. take a look at that and that. that might become in use for. Yeah, that's a great tool. That's a good suggestion, Tom. Mm -hmm. And okay, so another question here. So how to choose the best study plan when you study alone, have too much material available on the internet, so video, podcast, <laughs> tutors, grammar, et cetera. What's your advice here, Lindsay? <laughs> I mean, you, you know, design your study plan for you. So you're not necessarily choosing it from anywhere. Today, we're giving you guys the tools to create your own study plan, right? What is the kind of media? What kind of friends do you want to make? Maybe that also includes hiring a tutor, right? Working in a language lesson, but you're designing your own plan that's right for you. It's not right for anyone else. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. And it's, uh, it's about what you find entertaining, right? It's not about what everyone else finds really engaging. I mean, again, you might love video games, you might love yeah. YouTube, uh, 
find the things that you love and you you won't have to worry about learning um exactly. yeah that's the point right it's yeah exactly we're learning through other things mm -hmm. absolutely and okay so another couple of questions and um yeah we so we'll get to this one here that says how can i incorporate new words that i have already been learning mm, yeah this is such a key right and we mm -hmm. know it's easy to know what a word means and just see it when we write it but how can we prepare so <clears throat> at all there's english we talk about this concept of opening your brain box and that means that when you're about to enter a situation let's say you're going to an international dinner maybe it's a meetup group and you know the language is going to be english think about some of the possible topics that might come up commenting on the food and make a quick list on your phone or just on a piece of paper before you go to the dinner, open your brain box, write out what are some vocabulary mm. words about food that I might wanna try using. I, my, I've learned lately, I'm gonna implement those. That's how you do it. So there's an extra step between listening, consuming and speaking, and that's opening the brain box and preparing. So. Mm -hmm. Yeah, brilliant tip. I love that. Uh, yeah. Open your brain box. I, I'm going <laughs> to use that. I'm definitely okay. going to use that for Spanish. <laughs> yep. All right. So we've got a question here from uh, Yeho that says, uh, hi, guys, I can understand every single word you are saying, but I often struggle while watching movies, shows, etc. in English. How do I fix such uh, such an issue? Yeah, I mean, I think that when it comes to this, first of all, somehow many of us learned that we have to understand 100% of whatever we're consuming. That's wrong. You definitely don't have to understand 100%. Sometimes students come to us and they say, oh, go back, play the video again. I want to understand it all. No, you need to find the gist, understand the main point mm -hmm. enough to connect again, connection, connection, connection enough to connect and enough to respond and to be relevant in your response. That's the mm -hmm. first thing. And then in the media you're consuming, you need to challenge, you need to have a challenging channel and an easier channel, right? We talk about finding that flow that might consist of being subscribed to multiple YouTube channels. Some of them are really hard. Some of them are easier, but that's, that all makes up your independent study plan. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Really great tactic there. And, uh, yeah, uh, one, we'll get to one more question here, because I think it, it covers quite a few different questions that, yeah. um, that were asked about grammar. Mm -hmm. um, so Akumi wrote that when I write English, my grammar is fine. But when I speak English, my grammar is, is going bad. So how can I fill uh, the gap between writing and speaking? Yeah, I think this, this is where practice comes in. And today we've been talking about is that sixth tip, you do need to find a way to practice. So you can, you can write grammar perfectly, but when you're in that moment of speaking, first of all, it's okay. If you make a mistake, we understand that part that's connection, not perfection, but then yes, you want to be correct. We're trying to speak correctly hundred percent. So that's where you jump on with a, with a tutor, you jump on a call to practice what you've been writing during the week or listening to. So that's mm -hmm. why practice really is so key. Mm -hmm. Yeah, great advice. Um, okay, so I've covered a, we've covered a lot of questions in here. Obviously, if you have more, keep them coming. I mean, you mm -hmm. know, yeah. we have Instagram as well. Uh, Lindsay has uh, Instagram with the All Is English podcasts. Don't yep. be afraid to fire us questions, uh, whether it's through Instagram, Facebook, whatever channel you, uh, you can reach us with. And yeah, I mean, first of all, thank you so much for the amazing advice, Lindsay. It really was. A pleasure to learn from you. Thank you for having me, Tom. This was so much fun. I agree. And uh, thank you, everyone, for joining. I hope all of these tips uh, across the series have come in useful. So if you want to watch these webinars at any time, you can go to our YouTube channel, Preply YouTube channel, where you'll find a playlist called the English Evolution Webinars. So you can watch all three webinars in there. And because you're subscribed, you'll also get these recordings via email. So take a look out for that and uh, you, they'll be in your inbox very shortly. So thank you so much for the amazing questions as well. And uh, best of luck evolving with English.